Hey, y'all. It's Sharon with Hosting God's Presence. It's been such a delight so far uh, for me to release these daily episodes uh, of Hosting God's Presence to you. I hope you enjoyed them. This is episode 24, Isaiah's Vision, I Saw the Lord. It's Sunday, April the 30th, 9 of R. This week, we are looking at places in the scripture where men encountered God, either in person, in a dream, or in a vision. Yesterday, we saw that Jacob encountered God through a dream. He was on a journey to go from one city to another city, and it had become nightfall, so he stopped at a certain place to rest. And we saw that that certain place was what we call sometimes a thin, a thin heaven. There was, there had been angelic activity there before. God had met someone there before. And so there was a, like an open heaven at that place. Jacob did not know this, but he stops there. And it says he finds a rock as to use as a pillow to rest for the night. When he laid down, he began to dream. And in this dream, he had an encounter with the living God and his angels. I've shared with you the last two days. There's a reason why God wants us to have encounters. Because encounters will transform us, give us purpose and direction like nothing else we experience. This is exactly what happened to Jacob and to Moses. Elohim, we welcome you here today. We set ourselves to seek your face. We want to become host carriers of your presence. We want to encounter you because we want to be transformed. We want to have fresh purpose and fresh direction for our lives so that we can manifest your presence, represent you, Elohim, on the earth realm, where the people that are hurting can see and hear and feel and be touched by Yeshua, Jesus' love, his grace, his favor, his goodness. Empower us, Elohim. So, Isaiah's vision of the Lord brought transformation, purpose, and direction. We're going to read all of Isaiah 6. There's only 13 verses. And then we're going to talk a little bit about it. Let's read verses 1 through 7, starting with verse 1. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a high and lofty throne. The bottom of his robe filled the temple. Angels were standing above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they flew. They called to each other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of the angel armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voices shook the foundation of the doorpost and the temple filled with smoke. So I said, this is Isaiah, oh no, I am doomed. I am undone. I am a sinful man. Every word that passes through my lips is sinful. I live among people who are sinful and have sinful lips. I have seen the king, the Lord of the angel armies. Then one of the angels flew to me. In his hand was a burning coal that he had taken from the altar He touched my mouth with it and said, This has touched your lips. Your guilt has been taken away and your sin has been forgiven. Wow. Once again, we see an encounter where they see a vision of the Lord God Almighty and angels are involved. Many times when you experience an encounter, angels are a part of that encounter. 
And here we see these angels are called seraphim. They are the angels that are around the throne and their main purpose is to worship the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of the angel armies. Here is Isaiah's transformation. He realizes that as he stands in the midst of a holy God, that he is sinful, that he, what am I doing here? He's thinking, I, I shouldn't even be seeing this because my life is not perfect. It's not, in his eyes, ready to encounter the living God. But what did the goodness of God do? Send an angel to touch his lips and say, son, I've touched your lips. I've purified you. Your sin is forgiven. And if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, guess what? Your sins are forgiven. And you, like Isaiah, can have an encounter with God. Because remember, the things that were done in the Old Covenant was done for our example to teach us and to show us that we can also have those same kind of encounters and experiences. Well, then it moves on. And this is where we see Isaiah gets his purpose and his direction. God gives him a commission. He had a plan for him. This is what Isaiah says, starting with verse 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah says, Here am I. Send me. And God said, Go and tell this people. God just commissioned him as a prophet. To, as a prophetic voice. And this is what God says to the people. They were stiff-necked and hardened. So God says through Isaiah, no matter how closely you listen, you will never understand. No matter how closely you look, you will never see. Why? Because their hearts were hardened. So declare, Isaiah, to these people who are closed-minded, who have ears that are plugged and eyes that are shut. Otherwise, if they had eyes to see and ears to hear, they would also have a mind to understand and they could return and be healed. This is what it says in verse 10. So Isaiah asked the Lord, how long, Lord, how long am I supposed to prophesy this? How long am I, am I supposed to remind them of their sinfulness and how they're, they're closed-minded and their ears are plugged and their eyes are shut? And God says to him, until the cities lie in ruin with no one living in them, the houses have no people and the land is completely desolate. In other words, God said, keep prophesying to them, keep declaring because maybe they will turn their hearts toward me. And then the Lord goes on to say, the Lord will send his people far away and a large area in the middle of the land will be abandoned. You see, because of their hardness of heart, because they've chosen to live in sin and not live according to the plan of God, God knew that they were going to be taken captive and go into a land that was desolate. This is what the Lord's prophesying to them. He's telling them what's going to happen if they don't repent. Albert Barnes commentary states, go and proclaim truth to a corrupt and sensual people. And the result will be that they will not hear. They are so wicked that they will not attend to the word that God sends. They will become even more hardened yet go anyway. And those certain of producing this effect still proclaim it. See this passage. You see, God, God knew what was going to happen. See, God knows your heart. He knows my heart. He knows whether or not we're going to relent of our sin, of our hardness of heart, and we're going to come in and totally surrender to him, or we're not. But even if we choose not to, God still wants the message of the gospel, the goodness of God preached to us every single day, preached to those whose hearts are hard. Their ears are heavy. They're dull. They're stupid. They're insensible. And their eyes are shut. This word literally means to spread over and then to close. It denotes here the state of the mind, which is more and more dis, dis, in, indisposed to attend to the truth. You see, in our world today, friends, 
There's many, many, many hard-hearted people. They're corrupt, sensual, living after their own ways, wanting to do their own thing. This is prophesied in 1 Timothy, that in the end of the age, these are the things that are going to be happening. But God, just as he did with Isaiah, wants to commission you and I as carriers of his presence to go and release his word of life anyway. Because maybe, just maybe, someone will turn and say yes to the living God. That's what our commission is, to have these encounters, to become host of his presence, and then go forth and proclaim the good news to everybody we meet, no matter whether they receive it or not. Because just maybe one person will say yes. Because Jesus said he left the 99 sheep to go after the one. That's our commission as well, to go after the one. Keep sharing. Keep proclaiming. Keep seeking the God. Keep going after the presence of God and the encounters of God so you can be transformed, get fresh purpose and direction. Let's wait a moment, inviting the presence of God to encounter us. Come, Yahweh, manifest yourself in our midst. We say, as Isaiah said, that we are undone in your presence. We ask that you would take that coal and you would cleanse us of any unrighteousness and empower us to be your witnesses in this hour to proclaim your goodness and your grace to everyone we meet. Let's wait for him to touch us with his coal of fire. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We thank you for your angelic host that work with us. We invite you here, Elohim. We invite you, angelic host, because we are heirs of salvation. We thank you for aiding us in this life. Our song today is Revelation Song by Carrie Joby. I encourage you to take time to listen to it. On YouTube, it will be in our playlist tab under the worship list for hosting God's presence. On Spotify, you'll get the first 30 seconds, and then you have to go and listen to it on the platform. Don't forget to subscribe to Hosting God's Presence page, and you'll get a free gift. And if you want to know more about us and our services, click on my bio link. We're here to help you become transformed, gain fresh purpose and direction in your life. Until tomorrow, friends, this is Sharon.